Okay, all right. Well, hope everybody's doing well. Um, you know, obviously, uh, quick on the game, um, just in whatever we want from a question standpoint. But, um, you know, thought we came out, started the game, you know, okay. Uh, obviously, we had the three real bad series in a row. I um, think we had some play steamroll there a little bit on us and, and uh, you know, give the Giants credit for some of the things that they were doing. Um, I think I would mentioned last week, you know, Tyrod's a really good player and I think he made some good reads and adjustments in the game and got us in a couple different looks that were uh, that were new that we were working on last week that, um, you know, they, they did a good job of, of handling really well. And um, certainly from that standpoint, it was good for us to see uh, in those situations to kind of clean some stuff up there, which was good. Um, I know we talked a lot last week about the run game which I thought that was better uh, from that standpoint. Even some of the runs that they, they threw at us that were a little bit different that we were able to adjust on the sideline, which were, which were good from that standpoint. Um, but obviously overall not, you know, not what we want, not good enough, that's on me. I gotta make sure that um, all that stuff is in, in a good place where we're executing at the highest level. Um, and certainly this week, um, you know, pushing forward, getting ready to go against Tampa and in a, in a great opportunity for us to go out and, and play well and, and give ourselves a chance to win. So. Um, you know, some things to really learn from in the last game, which is good. Some things over the last several weeks that we've learned from and tried to grow. And, um, you know, as every year in the NFL, um, every season, you know, I think you evolve as the season goes on and you continually try to um, play to wherever you're at as a team standpoint or a defensive standpoint and, and put the, the guys in hopefully the best position you can to uh, be able to go out and execute and give yourself a chance to win. So got to do a great job of that this week. Got to be really clean on it and make sure we go out and give these guys an opportunity to go play fast and aggressive against, um, you know, a good offense and a good quarterback and, um, you know, team we played a, a long time ago. It's not, uh, it's been a few weeks, so we got to go back and dive back into what they're doing now. So. Sounds, like, yeah. last week. It sounds like you're trying, you're changing things around, like more than maybe you expected. Is that fair to say? Um, I don't think we're changing. I was, um, you know, you always try to add as the season goes, certainly. Um, I think uh, as you, no matter what year I think I've been in as a coach, um, I think that the, whether it's the scheme or the, the players have changed with injury or whatever it is, you know, you've changed, you adapt as the season goes. I think certainly as you get towards the end of the year and you're playing really good teams, teams that have a, either a second chance to, to play you um, or have a longer look at what you've done through the course of the year, um, you know, you want to make sure you're uh, adapting and, and adjusting as the season goes and things that have been on tape that you need to uh, move either in a different direction or sometimes – um, player changes, you know, can affect that too. Certainly had that in the past before uh, from that aspect of it. And, and, you know, guys are out on the field to give you the best chance to win that week. Certainly, you know, sometimes that adjusts from that standpoint. Sure. Yep. You, you, you mentioned last week with the run game. That teams have done a good job of disguising some of the motions yeah. and the blocks. Yep. Do you feel like having your nickel packages, you were better suited for that? And you the guys because it seemed like they did a few of those things too. Yeah, um, you know what? It's that's um, it's good. I think that there's been a lot of you know we call them like eye control or eye candy, like some of the different looks that we get from formations and motioning and things like that. And sometimes depending on the personnel that they're giving us, some of the different packages that we run, um, we can simplify some of that depending on which package. And sometimes that's in game. You're trying to figure out, okay, hey, this is the package we have out of this group this week. Um, some of the formationing that they're giving us game plan wise. Um, we don't like out of that group or we like out of this group now better than what we thought we were going to. That definitely happens in the game. And certainly, um, you know, playing a team like the Giants back, you know, really almost back to back with that and some of the different looks that they gave. Um, there were some adjustments in the game, you know, without getting too specific. There was like, hey, maybe this is a better group to handle some of the movements that, that we're getting now. Sure, that absolutely happens. Yep. Hey, hey, man, man. Man. Hey, man. Hey, man. With some of the best football you guys have played on defense this season, as you watch the film, what did you guys do that night yeah. That you haven't done this past, this past few weeks. Yeah, um, you know, I think um, early in the year, obviously, um, all the teams are a little bit different than they are late in the year, for sure. Um, you know, that was that was you know a good game for us from that aspect of it. Um, you know, I think we just want to make sure this week we're going back to, you know, playing um, you know fast and aggressive, and I got to do a good job of making sure that the defense is in a position to do that. I think from that aspect of it, um, you know, to make sure we're we're ready to go. It's, it's interesting, you know, any year, any year you watch a season of football and you're 18 weeks later than where you were when you look at a tape early in the year, um, it tends to look different, you know, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams. Um, you know, there is a factor there that goes on of, of the season and, and 
you know, we're just gonna make sure we give our best effort to that this week too, so that we look as close to that as possible. It'd be great. When you say you want them to play fast and, and aggressive, are they able to right now? It seems like there's a lot of uh, communication problems, a lot of confusion, for for lack of a better word. Yeah, um, I wouldn't say that. You know, I think we can play fast and aggressive. Yes, absolutely. Let me answer that for you first um, from that start uh, standpoint, but. Um, no, I mean, I think uh, what, what we've tried to do in, in some of the recent um, games and, and really through the course of the year, you're trying to, as I said, grow and, and um, you know, add to packages and sometimes communication comes with that. That's pretty standard from that aspect of it. And I think at this point, too, it's a good opportunity for us to say, okay, what do we think is um, the things that they do and what are the things that are going to maybe put us in some of those tough communication systems and do we want to use those or not, utilize those or not. And um, you know, as you go, sometimes you, you improve those uh, communication situations as you go. You know, certainly it's always uh, the more you can do it, then the better you get at it from that aspect of it. But I don't think there's a lot of really actually different communication than what we've done from that aspect of it. Um, you know, one of the things, again, we talked about last week was the run game and doing a good job of reemphasizing our run game communication. I think that was important for us to do in this past game, which is what we tried to do, um, put an emphasis on that, you know, certainly when – you know, when you get to the sideline and you're trying to make adjustments and, and it's going fast, that, that communication's got to be clear and concise and quick because in case you've got to go back on the field, you're trying to adjust that. Or a lot of times when that stuff gets to a, a higher level um, in a series itself, then the players have a great way to communicate um, amongst themselves in between plays of like, hey, we've got to do a better job with this or that. And then, that was just a big, um, like we talked about last week, an emphasis and a re-emphasis for us. How do you go back to how do you balance having simulated pressures versus putting players maybe in positions that, that are awkward for them? Yeah. Um, let me see. That's good. Uh, simulated pressure. So sometimes, you know, I think it's good to, you know, try to change up the blitz patterns when we can with those, uh, with those looks. And, and you're trying to really um, – it's however you think you can best affect the offensive protection systems. Sometimes you, you may know an offensive protection system, a, a coach, a – uh, a background maybe in what that is, and you try to take advantage of um, maybe some of the protection rules that they have. And there's always a little bit of a, you know, you, you try to do the best you can to balance it, you know, and, and hit it at the right time. Um, you know, we had a couple of good ones uh, the other night, and then a couple that um, didn't hit at the right time from that aspect of it. And that's me, you know, I'm trying to make sure that I, I got to do a good job of making sure those are optimized at the best time we can, we can do those. Um, but you are trying to stress the opponent on the sideline during the game, especially if it's something they haven't seen before, um, where now they're trying to work on it and figure out exactly what they're going to do in those situations. You know, we had, you know, we had, a, we had a corner pressure last week, you know, that, that was stressing some of the protection stuff that they did. And um, so that was good to be able to get that one in there too, you know, from that aspect of it. And, 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 you know, when you do things like that, you do have to shift a little bit of where it becomes harder. Um, you know, maybe for somebody else on the field. But that's the good thing about, you know, we have great players. You know, we have, we have great players with good versatility, and that's the part that puts the most pressure on an offense on the sideline during a game to adjust um, if you have a, um, a proper mix of it. Hey, Matt, uh, uh, Hassan Reddick said uh, during the week last week uh, that it's been very difficult for a lot of the players to uh, change in midstream from, from Sean to you, different play caller, uh, some changes going on. Um, he says, especially for the younger guys, and for the guys who came in during the season, uh, it's been a lot of change. Uh, what was your reaction yeah. to that? Um, nothing. Like I said, I think it's it's you know change or just you know we've we've tried to just have additions where we've we've felt um, you know we needed to add. But like I said, you know from a coaching standpoint, it's been a good collaborative effort with that as it's been all year. Um, I think the, you know the communication between. The coaches and the coaches and the coaches and the players and, and the players and the players. It's really, it's great. I mean, we've got great people. They're, you know, when you sit in the classroom and you're going over stuff on the field and you know, you're just having good football conversation. So um, I think from that aspect of it, everyone's been you know, really good with all of that. And I think that's the best part of it. And that's, that's what makes it fun. You know? You're kind of just that collaborative work. Um, like I said, whether it's coach and coach or coach and player or player and player, you watch that and you see the growth. You see the development. And you know, football is great because part of it is mentorship, you know, and part of it is helping whether it's younger players or younger coaches. And honestly, some of the best, you know, my years of, of growing as a coach was from, you know, great players. And that's happening for me now, too, which is amazing, whether it's Haas or Fletch or BG or JB or Slay. I mean, like, I'm I'm listening to what those guys see. Like, I'm I'm trying to, like, 
they're on the field. That's, that's the stuff that happens for them, their eyes. And I'm always like, hey, what did you see there? Or how did you see this? And, you know, that's the knowledge I always search for because then, you know, I love that because then I get to go back and, you know, teach that to somebody else. You know, there's still things that, like I said, like Junior Sale taught me or Teddy Bruschi taught me or Mike Vrabel taught me that I'm like, hey, you know, this one time, this is what he saw. Like, does that make sense to you? And they're like, yeah, that really makes a lot of sense. And I'm like, great, maybe you can use that. Maybe that can help you. And, and that's the part I love. So, I mean, all of that is, to me, just really good collaborative work. You guys have used three safety packages a lot for that. Now it's sitting out for the rest of the season. How much does his loss impact that? Do you feel like you have to change your scheme a little bit more and not use as many three safety packages? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, um, you know, you just feel really horrible for Sydney. I mean, he, he's just – you obviously you guys spend a little bit of time with him, but, I mean, what an what unbelievable person. What a great uh, just player, work, you know, young guy, works hard, everything that we tried to ask him to do. And I think you see that on the field too, you know, that energy, that excitement, the explosiveness, all of the things that, you know, and, and you just – you love to be around guys like that. And so certainly, you know, that's – um, first and foremost, you know, you feel bad about that. But I think for for us as a team, defense, you know, you just you move forward. You know, you always have plans in place because, um, you know, those things can come up, uh, whether they're long-term or short-term, and you try to adjust and, and take a look at um, whether you can keep those packages, move on from them, or somebody else go in those roles, certainly from that aspect of it, or change them slightly, maybe give them a different look, you know, from that aspect of it. Um, but those are things that in the game of football you always try to have plans for um, going forward if anything does happen where you do have to adjust personnel. Hey, Matt, going back to your, your origin of, of coming to the Eagles, like, yeah. did you have connections in the building? Like who were they and, and how did it sort of come about? Yeah. Out and all that sort of stuff? Um, yeah, uh, definitely had connections in the building. You know, I've been in the league a little while, so, um, you know, sometimes the, the circles in the league, certainly with uh, Mr. Laurie and, and Howie and Nick and, um, you know, other, other people in the building. Jeff Stoutland and I worked together a long time ago at Syracuse. You know, we had a crossover there a little bit. So a um, lot of good friendships uh, from that aspect of it in the building, which was great. Um, certainly for me, I mean, it was just – a tremendous opportunity to come and, and you know, learn and, and be around um, Nick as a head coach who does an unbelievable job. I think, you know, the way that he uh, has just um, built the program and the team uh, and, and the unbelievable culture that he has uh, here in place. I mean, I, I love it. It's really it's awesome to watch. I think it's, you know, it's good for me. I, like I said, I kind of feel like I'm the old guy sometimes. But, you know, to see a um, younger head coach you know, in those roles and how he has just done a phenomenal job standing up in front of the group and leading and um, pushing the team and all the rest of it is, it's really cool. You know, it's great for me. It's great, you know, it's great for me to see too, you know, um, been in the league a long time, but, you know, I always love to appreciate opportunity to learn something maybe that's a little bit different than what I'm used to. And I think that's how you grow. And um, I'm so impressed by what, you know, he's done, you know, in, in, in a short time. I think, uh, you know, when you sit in here and you feel it and, you're around it. Um, for me, I, I love it. It's really, it's been a blessing for me to, to be able to, you know, see that and experience it from that aspect of it. Sure. Yeah. Matt, what um, challenges does Baker Mayfield present? Yeah. Um, so offensively, uh, certainly starts with the quarterback. Um, you know, the one thing that sticks out right away, and I, I got to start with this, is just, you know, how strong he is. He's really, um, I think he's number two uh, when you look at it in, in forced missed tackles, um, you just can't get him down. And I think that's where he extends plays and he can get his eyes back downfield. And he's got, obviously, um, you know, between Mike and Godwin and, and some of the other guys he has out there, he's got sp speed. You know, they have speed on the field and they have, uh, you know, an issue downfield if you don't have those guys handled. And some guys you can just put the ball up to and they're going to go make plays. You know, he's got good players from that aspect of it. I think he's um, really good at reading coverages. I think he does a good job of getting the ball out fast. Uh, in those situations, then extending the plays when he needs to, um, and he's you know he's savvy enough and elusive enough, and like I said, his lower body strength is really good. And, and sometimes you just see guys try to tackle him high, and he just kind of like shrugs him off and then extends it. Um, even White, you know, the back uh, does a good job of getting in his space and they get the ball to him, and, and he's like the number one guy. You know, force missed tackles. He's hard to tackle in space. So I think just playing to the skill that they have, I think he, uh, Baker does a good job with that. I think, um, like I said, he can read coverages. And, you know, when you have guys like Mike Evans, you know, there's going to be certain things that you see a lot of, you know, week in, week out, and, and defenses that are trying to take him away. And so 
Um, you know, is the coverage rolled to him? Is there, you know, one guy? Is it single high? Is it man? Is it how are they displacing their extra help? You know, most defensive structures have four guys in the rush. They got seven in coverage. There's, you know, combinations that you play with that to try to take a, a guy like Mike Evans out. And then now you have a problem over here, you know, obviously on the other side um, with Godwin. So, you know, I think he sees that stuff really well. And I think he's seen the combinations of coverages against these guys through the course of a year to kind of go back to what we were saying earlier, where early in the year, you know, he's working through some of that stuff and he's trying to figure out, you know, the skill guys that he have and how people are playing them as opposed to now where, you know, it's a good bank of games where um, maybe earlier in the year he wasn't sure, but now it's got a pretty big, you know, pretty good log of coverages against these guys. And, and then he gets a quicker decision make where he can go with the ball faster uh, from that aspect of it. So I think that's the progression you've seen from him through the course of the year. Sure. I want you to hear that rotation of the, the young quarterbacks with Ely and Eli. I guess if Slay comes back this week, do you still see them having a role uh, in the defense? Yeah. Um, I think it's been good for those young guys to go out and play. You know, I think it's been exciting for us to see kind of what they've been able to do in certain situations and um, some of them with some flexibility. You know, we've, we've had a chance to move them kind of inside and outside and, and put them in some different matchups, which has been good too. So having that experience will certainly help them um, – you know, us now and then for the future uh, as they grow um, and go. And, and certainly, you know, hopefully, you know, with Slay and all that, we know, you know, how great he is and everything that he brings. So um, certainly, if, you know, we can get into that situation, then, you know, we're, we're obviously excited to get him out there uh, in play. So, and then we'll just try to get everybody else in a situation depending on whether it's down in distance or a personnel package or something like that area of the field. Uh, where we think those guys that we have now seen, those young guys that we have now seen, um, if we think they can help us in that situation and try to get them on the field when we can. Sure. How much have you leaned on Kevin Byard from a communication standpoint in the secondary came yeah. the season, but yeah. played so much? Yeah, Kevin's great. Um, and, and you felt that right away, you know, when he got here in the room and just his communication, the way that he, he sees the game. Um, and certainly in the deep part of the field, kind of where, um, you know, he's, he's been, you know, we've moved him around a little bit. So he, him having that flexibility has been great. Um, but definitely, you know, even a couple of weeks ago, you know, kind of had Reed had the green dot. But like Kevin communicating, you know, as safeties, um, you know, you play like split safety coverage. It's a lot of my side, your side communication. But then you have to like confer with each other and then communicate down to the linebackers. You know, in middle of field safety, there's probably some sort of rotation or some sort of down safety that then communicates um, to the deep field guy who then communicates out to the corners and that, that rotated down guy is communicating to the linebacker so everybody's kind of on the same page. That's just standard um, communication through the core of the defense. And Kevin's ability to actually do both is, is great. Sometimes you get guys that are just really deep field communicators. Sometimes you get guys that are more in-the-box communicators. Um, he's had that experience on both levels, um, which is great. Now you feel the function of, of mixing those coverages in that aspect, knowing that he's going to be able to um, – especially down in the box, handle the stuff with the linebackers because that gets involved now in run game issues and run fits and, and some of that stuff that we talked about before. Um, so heavily lean on that from that standpoint, but also just his experience and his eyes. You know, hey, what are you seeing on the field or what are you feeling here? Or, you know, do you see these guys in this position? Or, um, you know, it's, it's obviously all about, you know, the opponent, which is good, but sometimes it's about, like, making sure you see the guys on our side too, you know, and what are you feeling on the field and the communication there, and I trust him you know, and lean on him a lot for that feedback. It's really good. Really, really good.